the sound of war. And stay ye not, but pursue after your enemy and smite the highmost of them. Fall upon 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 them. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the channel if you are new. This is the house of David and the house of David is getting stronger and getting stronger and getting stronger by the day. And the house of Saul is getting weaker and weaker every day. I want to talk to you today about a man by the name of Peter who snatched up a man by the name of Isa. Peace be upon them both. You call him Jesus. And he began to rebuke him. Now, if Jesus was God, evidently Peter didn't think so. Now, let's get that passage. This is going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Pause. So Peter carried Jesus off. If you look at that word took, it actually goes into carry. OK, it goes also into forcibly carrying someone. OK, it can also go into um, pulling to the side. OK, however you put it, that word took also goes back to Enoch because the Bible says God took him. OK, this is going into an action word. OK, Peter took Jesus. Okay, he maybe was bigger than Jesus, pulled him to the side, however you interpret it. Okay, and he began to rebuke him. Now, if you look at the word rebuke, that word is used when Jesus cast out devils. Okay, so here we have Peter rebuking Jesus. But the Christian says Jesus is God. Well, evidently, Peter didn't think so. He snatched him up. He snatched up Jesus and began telling him that this is never going to happen. Now, evidently, Peter was telling the truth, according to the Quran. OK, because we believe the prophet Isa was rescued by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this right here, brothers, is a clear contradiction if you're trying to say that Jesus is God. Now I have Acts 10 26 and it reads, but Peter took him up saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. So Peter snatches Jesus up. We know because the same word is used in Acts 10 26. OK, he literally grabbed a person that was bowing down to worship and said, hey, don't do this. I'm a man. This is going into an action word. Peter snatched Jesus up. Now, how are you going to snatch God up? Keep in mind that the Bible says at his presence, the heels melt, the mountains shake and every soul trembles. This is what happens in God's presence. God's presence will tear the rocks. So how is a man snatching Jesus up, rebuking him if he's God? Then we have Acts 2, 22. I won't be long today. Ye men of Israel... Hear these words. You people right now, I want you to do me a favor. I want y'all to hear these words. 
Here, these words were emphasized because what he is about to say is very important. Ye men of Israel, you Christians, hear these words. Listen to what I'm about to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man, listen to me, a man approved of God. Doesn't say the man is God. It says a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did. So Jesus didn't even do the miracles. He said, I can of myself do nothing. Which God did by him. Let that sink in. Here we have a man. He's approved by God and is God doing the miracles, the wonders and signs. Which God did by him. He was the vessel that was used to do these miracles. In the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. So this was common knowledge that Jesus was a man. He was appointed, approved of God, but he was a man. Now I have some dessert. I'm going to get you John. And this is going to be the gospel of John, where Jesus is going to tell you with his own mouth that he was a man. Now, before I read that, you have to get these scriptures out of your mind, because what's coming into your mind right now is, but I and my father is one. But I and my father is one. Hold up. Everything Jesus spoke was in a parable. Everything he said was in parables. Most of the time, my brothers, my sisters, when Jesus spoke, mostly not even his disciples could fully understand him. OK, Jesus was a person that was misunderstood and the Pharisees misunderstood him plenty of times. His own disciples, whom he spoke plainly to of the parables, even they were confused and misunderstood him. Jesus was light years ahead of them. And he was speaking in parables. He was speaking in metaphors. And most of the time when he talked, they did not understand him. So how all of a sudden you is going to be able to understand when he said, I am my father is one. Let's just be honest. You don't understand that. And keep in mind, in John 17, Jesus prayed that we all would be one. He says it twice in John chapter 17. Search for yourself. He said we all are one. Does that mean we're God? No, it doesn't mean we're God. And another question. If you're saying Jesus is the way to God. How could he also be God? How could he also be the destination? How is he going to be the way and the destination? All right. When Jesus said he was the way to God, that's if you interpret it that way. OK, and I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. If you're saying it that way, keep in mind, every prophet was the way in their day. Moses was the way in his day. Jeremiah was the way in his day. Joseph, if you wanted to get some corn, if you wanted to live, you had to come and see Joseph, who is a picture of Christ. He's a type and shadow of Jesus. Now, he was the way of his day. He was the Messiah of his day. So just because Jesus says he's the way doesn't mean he's the destination. He can't both be the way to God and God. And when Jesus said, I am my father is one. Keep in mind, he also said we all are one. OK, when he was called the son of God, he said, hey, you all are gods. Jesus never once 
put any deity on himself. Not once. This is the reason why he says, why callest thou me good? Seeing there's one good. And that's God. In other words, he refused to be associated with God. He knew over and over and over and over again that the Lord is good. The Lord is good. How could he be good if the Lord is good? Now, this is the scripture coming from Jesus all mouth. And I love it. It's going to be John chapter eight. And let's go to verse uh, let's go to John 840. But now you seek to kill me. A man. Pause. He said a man. He didn't say your father. He didn't say God almighty. He said a man that have told you the truth. So he's telling you the truth that he is a man. This is what he's telling you. Now, the Christians, you got to get past what the white man has taught us. The white man has been a horrible teacher of the Bible. And I just have to be honest. OK, I just have to keep it real. I have to be honest right now. If you was to go to the Bible and go to Google and let's say you just type in God's presence shook the mountains, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, oh, that was Jesus, the son of God coming down. It don't say it at all, but they just learn to just put taco sauce on everything. And that's exactly what they did with Jesus. They just put Jesus on every detail to the point that God doesn't even have any independent personality in the Bible. Everything has been stolen from God Almighty and has been placed upon someone whom they call his son. OK, it's like they locked the father out of his own house. And it's all because of the way they interpret the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John is a very, very hard parable. It is very hard to understand. He was speaking in parables and the Christians of today do not fully comprehend what Jesus was saying. So so there you have it. I just wanted to give you a little bit today. I wanted to show you, first of all, that Peter snatched up Jesus. OK, he rebuked him. That's not something you do to a God. And then he takes you to Acts 222, where he says, Jesus, a man. OK, he knew he was a man because he snatched him up. He snatched him up. If anybody knew who Jesus was, it was Peter, not Paul. Peter. Peter said, hey, he's a man. OK, every miracle he did, he didn't even do. It was God. OK, everything about the life of Peter is a type and shadow of Christ. And keep in mind. Peter was the one who knew who Jesus was. OK, we know our Bible says he's the son of the living God. OK, and that's not going into God Almighty. That's talking about the dog. That's talking about Paul. That's talking about the wolf. That's a little too advanced for you. OK, Peter knew exactly who he was. <laughs> he said, you're the son of the living dog. You're the son of Paul. OK, in other words, we know that you are under Paul. OK, we know. And Peter said this to um, Jesus and Jesus said, oh, m my father in heaven has revealed this to you. OK, but when Peter snatches him up and says, oh, you're not going to suffer the cross. Then, according to the Bible, Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. OK, so. <laughs> When you look at that whole thing, there's some things that's a little off and a little fishing. One minute God's using him, one minute the devil's using him. All right. But either way it go, Peter was the man who recognized that Jesus was not God. Please share this. Um, Christians, they just don't get it. They, they won't get it. Trust me. 
they won't. They have been put under a spell. They are under the spell. The Bible says, let their eyes be darkened. Um, let their table. And we know that the table represents the word of God because it says, write this upon tables and make it plain. So the Bible says, let their table or their Bible, I interpret to be a snare. The Christian will not get it because the Christian is the one the most high wants to destroy. It's just that simple. There's no magic scripture you can get them to wake up. OK, there's not one. I tried to take them to Matthew 16 and, and, and let them see that they're they're not going to even catch this right now in the comments. There's going to be a Christian saying, no, Jesus is God. That's just their fate. That's just their fate. They're idolaters. And there's nothing you can say or I can say that can help them. But it might be one that might wake up. We just had a man break free from Christianity all because of the lie of the Trinity. He came to Islam. Why? Because Trinity is not in the Bible. And that's another one of the white man's terms that he puts for the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, which is not in the Bible. He just made that up. So some people are waking up and breaking free from the white man's lies. And that's just in love and peace. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.